Let's talk about menstruation. Did you know, globally on any given day, 300 million women and girls menstruate? Most women in the world will spend at least 1,500 days of their lives bleeding. For any girl or woman in the world, periods can be a struggle. To reduce these struggles, we need to improve menstrual health management across the globe. For menstruating girls and women, this means Access to mental products that observe and collect blood safely. Privacy to handle my period when I need it. Soap and water for washing myself during my period. Facility to dispose and money may menstrual waste. This film from Tanzania gives you a glimpse of what the challenges of having menstruation looks like for many girls in rural areas of Sub-Saharan Africa. Shirati is a typical rural town in the lake region of Tanzania, where most people rely on farming. The area is remote and far away from modern infrastructure and commercial products. Here in Shirati, the challenges with menstruation are much more problematic for girls because menstruation and blood is seen as a taboo. This taboo creates a big silence. You do not talk about menstruation, ever, to anyone. And when you have your period, you hide it for everyone around you. In fact, society treats it like it does not even exist. This silence means that for many, their first period comes as a shock. And so many start their menstruation uninformed, unprepared, and unsupported. Because of poverty and lack of access to commercial menstrual products in rural areas, girls use traditional materials such as rags, old clothes, cotton, pieces of cardboard, corn cobs, old sponges, pieces of mattresses, and even bark and leaves. But these are not only uncomfortable to wear, but also have poor absorption and are not hygienically safe. But buying improved menstrual products is difficult. And even when they are available, buying them is culturally sensitive. In Shirati, I can't even ask for a pad in a shop. Instead, I'll ask for a small bread. The package will be given me, to me in a black bag so that no one else can see what I've bought. Beside the cultural stigma, Using unsafe menstrual products has many health impacts. I'm a nurse at the local hospital in Shirati, and I see the problems with poor menstrual hygiene every day. The most common are urinary and vaginal infections, and these infections affect girls every day and may lead to more serious problems in the future. Another health challenge is cramps. Most of us experience cramps when we have our period, and this is also true for girls in Shirati. But here, the use of painkillers is restricted because of culture norms and high costs. For many, this makes the period a painful and dreaded experience. Menstruation also has impacts on female mobility and activities. Across the world, Cultural stigmas dictates what girls and women can and cannot do while they are menstruating. In Shirati, this means that menstruating girls are not allowed to fetch water, cook, wash dishes, and touch certain plants. When they are not allowed to do this, these tasks are passed on to a younger sibling, most often a sister. Now she must take on the burden of you being on your period. Poor menstrual health management also has negative impacts on girls' performance in school. Several studies from across Sub-Saharan Africa show that prior to Menarche, girls are generally the best performing students. But when they get their first period, their academic performance drops significantly. This is because either they miss classes or have difficulties focusing in school. In Shirati, girls stay home from school on average two to four days during their period. The key reason for this 
is the cramps they get from bleeding, the lack of access to safe and improved products, and the embarrassment they feel for having their period. Even if they go to school during their period, they face several challenges. The biggest worry for many girls is leaking blood and staining their uniforms, and then get scolded by the teacher or getting teased by classmates for smelling and problems of handling used menstrual products. Another often neglected challenge in school is the poor standards of toilets and washing facilities. Toilets are often clogged, smelly, without water for flushing, and no doors for privacy. Many schools also lack water and soap for hand washing and have no bins for disposing of used pads. This makes it hard to stay clean and manage waste. And girls are either forced to throw their used menstrual products in the toilet, causing more clogging, or hide used bloody and smelly pads in their school bag until they reach home. Education is a significant contributor to escape poverty, and for girls, acquiring a full education is what gives them similar life opportunities as boys, to develop mentally and contribute to the economic growth of their country. Failure to acknowledge this link between improved menstrual health management, education, and economic and social development in Tanzania and Africa as a whole is a missed opportunity for both individuals and nations in Africa to reach their full potential. The NGO Majisafi works in Shirati on issues related to health and education. Raising awareness and educating girls, women, boys, teachers and husbands about period is a key for changing norms and attitude and break the silence about menstruation. But knowledge is not enough. Girls also need access to affordable and safe menstrual products. In a collaborative study between Lund University Center for Sustainability Studies in Sweden and University of Dar es Salaam in Tanzania, the challenges with menstruation among girls from four schools in Shirati was explored and three different menstrual products tested, including disposable and reusable pads and the menstrual cup. The purpose of the study was to assess the cultural acceptability, preferences and management issues they had with each. Commercially made disposable pads are well known in Shirati and available in some town shops. Girls want to use them because the pads make them feel clean and are easier to wear compared to traditional materials. But even though disposable pads are considered hygienically safe, girls do complain that they sometimes leak and the plastic in them do not breathe and that makes their skin itch. Another challenge linked to disposable pads is that they have to be purchased every month. And this is a heavy economic burden for most families because of other expenses that compete with pads, such as charcoal, oil for cooking, sugar, rice and vegetables, that benefit the whole family. To cope with the lack of funds for menstrual products, many girls wear their disposable pads for a longer time, and some even reuse them. This reduces the safety of the pads and poses a risk to their health. In my work as a nurse, I have met girls who have sold sex to afford to buy pads. This has led to HIV or other sexually transmitted infections, but also unwanted pregnancies and illegal abortions. Because of prevailing taboos against showing menstrual blood, managing waste from used pads is also a challenge. At home, girls either bury them in the ground or burn them in secret and the smoke from burning plastic is neither healthy for themselves or the environment. Commercially made reusable pads, on the other hand, do not contribute to any significant environmental problems because they are made out of degradable materials. Reusable pads last up to one year and are therefore more affordable in the long term compared to disposable pads. Girls also find that reusable pads absorb blood better and are more comfortable to wear compared to disposable pads because they are made out of fabric. 
But a challenge with reusable pads is that they require careful washing with soap and hot water. In rural Tanzania, water may not be readily available and boiling water is costly or time consuming because charcoal or firewood is needed to heat the water. Because of cultural taboos, safe drying of the reusable pads is also problematic. Most girls will therefore dry their pads indoors. Some of them even put them under their bed mattresses where the sun cannot reach to kill all bacteria. When it comes to the menstrual cup, it is still a novel product in Tanzania, and the girls in Shirati had never heard about it before. Menstrual cups are inserted into the vagina to collect blood rather than absorb it. It can stay inside the body for up to eight hours until it needs to be emptied. And because it is made out of silicone, one cup can be used for up to 10 years. This makes the cup both an environmentally friendly and cost-efficient menstrual product. Once the girls had been given training and tested the menstrual cup for a while, the majority preferred the cup over other menstrual products. In their experience, the key advantages of the menstrual cups is the privacy, mobility and confidence the cup gives them and the added advantage of having less hassles with management of the product during and after each period. In their own words, this is how they experience the benefits of using the menstrual cup. Nikitumia kikombe kikombe cha heli sita chafua nguo wala kuchekwa darasani kwa kuwa mna naitambua mzungu kwangu wa heli. Kutumia kikombe cha heli ni rahisi kwa sababu na kibadilisha mara, mara moja kwa siku nikiwa shuleni tofauti na zile pedi zingine ambazo nabadilisha na, na mara tatu kwa siku. Kwa kutumia kikombe cha hedhi, naweza kufanya kazi yoyote, kucheza mpira na kukumbia na kadhalika. Najisikia uru kutumia kikombe cha hedhi kwa sababu, naweza nikaiweka usiku kutwa. Kikombe cha hedhi, kinatumika kwa muda mrefu, kabla sijatumia kikombe cha hedhi, nilitumia shiringi elfu tatu kila mwezi kununua pedi. Nikitumia kikombe cha hedhi na epuka kupata maambukizi ya magonjwa kama vile UTI na fungus kwa sababu ya unyevu unyevu. Zamani nilikuwa natumia pedi za kawaida wakati wa mtihani. Nilikuwa naanza juu ya kuchafua nguo. Lakini kwa sasa hivi natumia pedi ya kikombe. Nikiwa kwenye hedhi. Siwazi juu ya kuchafua nguo bali najituma katika masomo yangu. What these testimonials show is that the benefits of the menstrual cup are many and they can have significant long-term impact on the lives of these girls. It is clear that the menstrual cup is the most sustainable menstrual product, but it may not be the product that every female prefer. After all, every woman has the right to choose what menstrual product that is best for her. But to do so, every menstrual option needs to be available accessible and affordable to all. Before that happens, menstrual hygiene management should be improved and scaled up in Tanzania and across the world. The significance of menstrual health management cannot be underestimated because Africa is the fastest growing continent on the planet and how we manage menstruation today and in the future has direct and indirect impacts on a number of the sustainable development goals. Improved and sustainable menstrual health management will impact the SDGs by decreasing the ailments and diseases linked to the use of unsafe menstrual products and management, improving female health and well-being. Keeping girls in school and eliminating gender disparities in education. Ensuring equal access to quality education for boys and girls. Empowering females to reclaim their dignity and confidence, contributing to achieve gender equality. providing better menstrual hygiene facilities, reducing diseases linked to poor water and sanitation. Enabling women to work during their period, vastly increasing their chances for decent work. Decreasing clogging of sanitation systems and environmental pollution, contributing to sustainable cities and communities. 
reducing the amount of chemicals and natural resources used in production and promoting sustainable consumption. We see this film as a way to break the silence about menstruation, to educate and raise awareness about why menstrual health management needs higher priority in society. This is the only way forward to end period poverty. Ni muhimu, ni muhimu, kuifadhi mazingira.